Hi, I'm Don Lexer, filmmaker, DJ, radio broadcaster, and general man about town. And my choice for accolade is Jeanette Lee, someone who I was lucky enough to meet in my formative years. We're talking about like, you know, when I was like eight, 16, 17, 18. And uh, crucial years in the formation of who I and she became. And uh, we're a product of the vinyl generation. You know, we grew up at a time when music was the only source of in, um, information, alternative information, and alternative inspiration. And, uh, and also, both being working class, we were into style and fashion because style and, and music was the only means of expression, the only way we could form some kind of identity. So these were crucial elements as we were growing up and we turned this shit into an art form. Um, luckily for me, we became an item in the mid seventies, just as the whole punk rock thing was exploding. And uh, we were right there in the center of the punk rock universe. And I was initially hesitant about the whole shit because I had my reggae thing going and I was, um, you know, I, yeah, I was all right. I had my, uh, what is it, soundtrack for Rebellion. So I wasn't looking for anything else at that time. And reluctantly, she dragged me along to see, I think the first band I saw with a clash changed my life. And it was through her that I got turned on to the whole punk rock thing. And I think it was her zest for life, um, experience, and she was always questioning things, never accepting anything on face value. Um, that kind of inspired me to kind of get my shit together, you know what I mean? And uh, we managed a shop called Acme Attractions from about 75 to about 78. Um, and this was a really interesting place because it was formed just as the punk rock thing was happening. And, you know, all the principal players would pass through the shop, drawn by the fashion and our mutual love of Jamaican music, it has to be said, because that was what I was playing down in the shop, hardcore Jamaican dub reggae. And you'd have people like John Lydon or Rotten, as he was known back then, passing through The Clash, The Slits, The Banshees, and other notable characters like Paddy Smith and Bob Marley and Deborah Harry. So we, what I'm trying to say is, you know, we experienced all that, all that stuff at the same time together, at an early stage of our life. And uh, how, hey, how do you forget shit like that? You know, we, from there we went on to working at the Roxy where I was the DJ. And you know, the, the whole shit unfold in front of us. And uh, and I think we're a product of that punk rock thing in that we, we really got into the whole DIY thing, the whole DIY ethic, which I think is punk rock's greatest gift. So, you know, I wanted to pick up a movie camera and became Don Let's the filmmaker. She went on to join a public image with John Lydon. And after a stint with them in about, what was it, 1987, um, was asked by Jeff Travis of Rough Trade Records to join the, he had to ask her twice. She didn't even jump at that in the first go. And from that point to this, she's been co-owner of Rough Trade Records and management. That's the label I'm talking about. And, you know, she's had a, had a hand in bands like, you know, The Cranberries, Pulp, Spiritualized, Arcade Fire. I mean, too many to mention. You know, and to this day, she's still doing her thing. And she's got fucking good taste. Has to be said. I mean, I'm, I'm honored to have been in her company and shared time with the woman. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, and also, you know, you've got to dig this. You know, she's become a major player in an industry that's still male dominated. You know, and she's been fighting that corner. Not um, not as, as a plan, just just by being who she is. She's been fighting that corner and holding that ground and, you know, and also passing that energy on with some of the acts that she signed, you know. Um, yeah, she's a trick. Thank you.